the definition of anger. I'd like to put this definition up and just talk about it very briefly because I think it goes, it relates back to the anecdotes you wrote as well. In nearly all these anecdotes, if not all of them, if I were to read them, I would see this definition, uh, this definition coming through. It's not my definition of anger. It's a definition based on a treatise by a famous Norwegian psychologist, Jan Smetzel. This whole paper was just on how to define anger. And I think this is important because I have read, I have read occasionally on the internet, um, and I've read sometimes even in, in chapters and books, people defining anger differently. One common alternative definition, and I, I, I won't, I'm not going to say it's outright wrong, but it's not the definition that Spencer would, would subscribe to, is this definition, you will see that people say anger is a reaction to perceived threat. And I've had discussions with Ray Novako, who's a great anger researcher about, about this very definitional issue. And I would say that um, it's, that definition lacks specificity. To say that anger is a reaction to threat confounds it with fear and anxiety. Right? Threat implies perceived danger. Perceived danger more likely leads to fear and escape and avoidance. Anger doesn't, as we'll find out. In anger, it's mainly a wrongdoing. It's perceived wrongdoing. It's not perceived threat. And Svensson, by the way, came up with this definition not just based on his own philosophical musings. He based it on... on um, lay people's perceptions of anger, as well as scholarly perceptions of anger. All right? So he says that there are two things you can count on when a person writes or talks about the anger. One is there's an appraisal. There's a belief that someone you care for, and typically by that it, it's the self we care for, but it can be vicarious anger where you care for your daughter or your son or your child or parents. Someone one cares for has intentionally or through neglect. Now that's important. When we get into some of the cognitive reappraisal exercises later, you will see it, it invokes this very definition of intentionality. Someone you care for, which can be yourself or, or another significant person, has intentionally or through neglect been treated without respect. Now, what Smedslin means without respect is using it almost in a metaphoric sense to mean this person, yourself or someone else, has, has basically been mistreated. That's really all he means. And in addition to that cognitive appraisal, there is a motivational tendency to have that wrongdoing righted, to have that wrong righted. And as I read through your anecdotes, I could tell many of you talked about, you know, causing grievous bodily harm to the person who offended you, to the person who mistreated you so badly. Some of you talked about, about you know, just yelling and screaming, and, and some talked about communicating. Whatever the case, whether it's communicating verbally, whether it's yelling or screaming or hitting, that is your way to right the wrong to have that 